Hi, I'm Peter Wright. I'm an ag engineer and really been working with manure all my life, but uh, now we're looking more deeply in how we might uh, treat that manure, uh, perhaps to our advantage. You can imagine where we were and everybody wants to move on from this. And you can see in the background, there's a building. Hopefully they'll do a better job of manure management, but maybe then manure treatment. We're doing this dairy manure management uh, because we want to move the dairy farms towards sustainability. Uh, sustainability includes both the environment, and we think of water quality, and then air emissions, which reflect on climate change. There certainly are other environmental issues. Um, sustainability also includes society, and that includes odors, which might have an impact on manure management and treatment, and also economics. If the farm can't afford to do it, they can't do it, and cost control is a big issue for farms. And the value added by the treatment will have to come into play uh, whether they can afford to do it or not. Um, there's any number of reasons uh, for additional treatment, and you can read them here and try to uh, pick which ones you might go forward with. Um, I think the main ones for dairy farms are phosphorus removal. Uh, many nutrient management plans restrict the amount of phosphorus that can be applied. And therefore, if you're over those limits in the soil already, you're gonna to have to move the phosphorus off in some way and sorting it out so you can move it and move it further uh, might be useful. Um, many farms are very interested in mass removal. They know that the dairy manure comes with a huge mass with uh, a lot of water attached. And so you'd save time and uh, costs and reduction in compaction if you could move the mass. Um, there is some ideas that we're gonna add food waste, um, utilize food waste, both get tipping fees from that and to uh, extract the energy from it. But if you do that on farms that produce their own forage, you're gonna need to move the nutrients off. So again, you're looking at a ways for manure treatment. Well, here's the conclusion. Uh, treatments are possible, but they have a high capital cost uh, typically a high O&M cost, and they take management. So unless you can justify it um, through those purposes we just mentioned or through byproduct sales, um, we're probably not ready yet for manure treatment, but uh, there are some treatments available. And we're still interested, so we're going to go on and examine it, even though now you know the conclusion. We also typically run it through an anaerobic digester when we think of treatment. Um, not only do we get the energy out when we do that, but we end up with a homogenized digestate. Um, we've reduced uh, the odor, we've reduced the pathogens, uh, we've made it more liquid, and, uh, and we got the energy. There's any number of things that we can actually do though uh, with the manure any number and it gets quite complex and a lot of choices. And that's what we really wanna do is to characterize some of these such that farms can pick um, and, and find out which ones or which series of uh, treatments might, be, might become suitable for them. There's also a number of ideas out there that uh, haven't come to pass yet, but might. Here's one that we're working on and we're actually converting carbon dioxide uh, through biomethanation into uh, methane. And we're also taking the digestate and running it through a hydrothermal liquefaction process. And the resulting uh, system might be one that uh, uh, could work for farms in the future. Uh, we do remember that there's a cost uh, per cow, the further further we move material. And if we can pump it, um, we it's more efficient, but if we have to haul it, either with a, a, a tank, or a tractor mounted one or a truck mounted one, the costs go up considerably. And this would be why we'd be interested in reducing the mass. Here's another, what a surprise, as the distance increases, so does the cost. When we look at our dairy farms, this is in New York State on a smaller sample of farms, but the costs vary tremendously. So the um, acres per hour varies, depends on the size of the farm, depends on where the fields are, 
um, depends on how much you're putting on per acre. And then your total cost um, ranges from uh, half a cent, almost one cent to almost two cents a gallon. However, that's still a relatively low cost when you consider the costs of treatment that could occur. We know that manure has intangible values, right? The organic matter is worth something. The disadvantages of compaction and the time it takes and the problems that can occur are also present with manure. Here's another scheme that uh, they came up with. This is called wet gasification. Unfortunately, you actually need to put in 25% solids. And as you know, dairy manure is 10% solids. So already we're only treating a portion of the manure. Uh, but the farm was interested in this. Would it help them move towards sustainability? Could it reduce the cost of hauling? Would it produce a byproduct? And was it economically feasible? Um, actually, in the end, it did reduce, ha re reduce hauling costs a little bit, but not very much. Um, it did produce a low-grade heat, but not very useful on the farm. And the potential sales weren't as much as you might wish they were, um, or as you weren't as confident in them as you might be. And, and there was a huge capital cost. Another issue that farms face is sand as a bedding is a wonderful, wonderful material, but sand as a part of a manure treatment system creates an, an extra step. So maybe you have to use a, a mechanism to sort the sand out. Um, also reclaiming the sand, this would be a good thing but additional capital cost to do it. So our project uh, put together by uh, Kurt Gooch um, was to do applied research and look at different manure treatment options and then uh, bring this out to the public. Again, we're trying to help dairy farms move towards sustainability. Um, we pretty much start with uh, separation, uh, separate the solids with a screw press. We picked a wonderful farm to cooperate with um, you can see, though, it's semi-complex, which way the manure flows, and they're actually, in the wintertime, recycling some of the manure to make the gravity channels work, but it all feeds to an anaerobic digester and then a, a, a screw press operation, and what we had hoped to do was to uh, get a baseline of how much manure was coming in, and then, therefore, uh, configure and use examples, either on-farm or uh, from other other sources of what would happen with different treatment options. So here's the system as it exists now, and we were going to put in a, um, a a system to ultimately utilize much more, get more of the solids, try to pelletize them, and try to uh, have them so that they could uh, either be exported or used in a uh, further on further fields. Um, it relied on an aerobic composter, which we were promised would reduce the moisture content um, in an effective and efficient, efficient way. It did reduce the moisture content. We are quite excited. Um, they added a mysterious inoculant. They put it into a aerobic composter in vessel. Um, and in three days time, they, uh, you can see they had considerable reduction in moisture content is a good thing. Unfortunately, when we looked at the energy expended, we found out that it was costing us a lot in energy. So 11 cents a pound of moisture, and you know there's about seven pounds of moisture per gallon of manure. And so this, no, you just can't do it this way. They actually were using electricity uh, not only mixing, but also to heat the, the and drive off uh, the moisture. So we were back with what are we going to do with the existing system? Um, and we have ideas that we'll take the screw press solids and run it through a bedding recovery unit, a pelletizer, and then a dryer, but also then take some of the liquids and run it through a different either uh, operations to uh, further sort out the solids. So we might come up with a system like this, um, using a dissolved air flotation or a belt press. We might come up with a, ultimately a system, um, one of these paths to uh, finally find out what is the optimum. Meanwhile, we were taking um, 
getting sample results from each of the uh, uh, from the flows in the in the digester. Um, so we we were taking these samples and, get, and getting flow. Uh, we also have ideas that the uh, nutrient planning going into the cow, the feed going into the cow, would give us uh, results of the manure coming out of the cow. Remember, there was some recycling which had to occur. And then if we run this through, um, and even on an Excel spreadsheet, and come up with the mass flows and nutrient flows um, going in, as well as you know, the moisture content and solid content, we could come up with uh, what would happen. So uh, different schemes, um, more sampling, and we uh, have thought of these treatments, the dissolved air flotation, the centrifuge, a sequencing batch reactor, uh, pyrolysis, a pelletizer, or maybe a belt press. Um, there's a dissolved air flotation. The farm actually has a grant to put in a, a, a partial dissolved air flotation system to handle some of the liquids and, and sort more solids out. Um, there's ideas of a centrifuge, there's, and uh, also ideas of a sequencing batch reactor that, that might work. There's any number of schemes, though, that people have come up with. Um, also, there could be a even more efficient drying operation that uh, could work, um, all of which might take energy. The energy might be available, of course, for the anaerobic digester. Um, we know it is possible. You can run it through a system and actually uh, end up with pure water. On a dairy farm, particularly in New York State, where we have plenty of water, you really got to ask, why would you take it all the way to water? But you might take it to a uh, where most of the nutrients are taken out. So you could spray irrigate the, the liquids as a, uh, to reduce the mass close to the farm and then haul it all the other nutrients further away. Again, there's any number of systems out there that do this. However, you've got to ask, what's the capital cost? What's the O&M cost? And how much management does it take? But we put together some fact sheets, and they're available at our website. We uh, talk about manure basics. Uh, we also look at specifically if you want to recover phosphorus, if you want to recover nitrogen and energy extraction. So you can uh, go to our website and look at those fact sheets. Ultimately, we'd like to have each of these components addressed in the, in the nutrient catalog. And for those of you familiar with, uh, not familiar with nutrient, um, it's a, they want to, encourage business development for both energy, fertilizer, and bedding and soil amendment um, from manure, and as well as um, develop ecosystem services, either nutrient trading or carbon trading, such that um, you can uh, increase the byproducts that, that could develop out of manure. But their catalog asks that each component that you might include in a manure treatment system would get scored based on different criteria um, such that if you had all nine of these you pretty much could tell what you were going to get into so i think this would be a a, a useful thing um, for farms to do and 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 for farms to know that they that they have done that Um, my conclusions, um, storage needs will increase, um, technology will advance, um, policies will continue to change, but as you think about manure treatment, you need to know and control your costs, and you certainly need to be careful out there uh, before you invest. Um, make sure, one, it will work on dairy manure, and how much will it cost and how much of your management time will it take? Um, this time, I'm certainly willing to take any questions you might have.